Okay, so here we're going to look at division uh, and, and just focus on something that's often referred to as long division. And long division is the often feared topic, I think, of most math students because this is a topic that often loses a lot of meaning and just becomes some long or terrible process. But I guess I'm here to say that although I'm not really the biggest fan of long division, it does make sense. And in fact, it's a pretty powerful tool. So I'm going to try and make sense of the long division in this video and get you started on, I think, um, a, a journey which uses powerful tools even though they might seem intimidating at first. So so what is it all about? Well, let's go to, um, I don't know, s 6 divided by 4, an example we used in the last video. There are several ways to write this. To write 6 divided by 4, can you use 6 and then the division symbol and 4? Or I could write a fraction, 6 over 4. Or I can use this symbol right here, which is usually how we write long division, right? 6 divided by 4. So all of these are the same. And we're going to use this last version right here to focus on long division. And so when you see a long division problem, what you should know is that what you're really looking at is how many times this number out here can go into that number right there. That's the basic uh, approach on long division. How many times can 4 fully go into 6? And really, um, that, that does seem like a disconnect from this right here, because this we read this, we could say the same thing. How many groups of 4 go into 6? Um, but here we, we say, how many times does 4 go into 6? Now, we're saying the same thing there. Don't lose that. We're really looking at how many full groups of 4 can we fit or get from 6 or fit into 6, however you want to say that. Um, but, but these do mean the same thing. I just want to point that out. So how do we approach long division? Well, um, let's start with the 6 divided by 4. This, this won't be an interesting first example, but it will get us started. So, <laughs> well, excuse me, sorry. So when we're looking at this, we're looking at how many times does 4 fully go into 6? Well, 4 goes into 6 once. So what we do in long division is put that 1 up here. And this means that 4 goes into this number once. And now long di division allows us to finish this process and figure out, well, how many times does 4 go into 6 exactly? Okay, well, well 4 times 1 we know is 4. So what we, we want to do now is figure out what's left over. So we do 4 times 1, and we write this down here, that's 4. And to figure out what's left over, we subtract from 6. So 6 minus 4 is 2. And all we did there, let's, let's recap. We said 4 times 1 is how many times we have so far for going to 6, which is 4. And we wanted to figure out what's left over to figure out how much 4 can divide into 6. And we subtracted 4 from 6 to get 2. And that move right there is, is, is what we always build on on long division. And sometimes, even with these problems, when we lose context, if we just repeat that process until there's nothing left, or until a pattern repeats, then we're, we're able to always solve every division problem, which I think some students like. Now here's the next step, which is to say, oh, okay, so there's something left over, 2. So how many times does 4 go into 2? It, it doesn't really. So what we want to think of now is go back to the original number, 6, and then, well, well now we're going to to need some other digit here. And whatever that digit is, whatever number we put there, it's going to be less than um, 6, or the, the 1's digit, so we need a decimal now. And so here we introduce a basic step of long division where we, we add on digits to the original number and carry them down to make something that we can use, which is 20. 4 can go into 20. Now you're saying that's crazy. Well. 4 is not really going into 20 here, it's going into 2.0. So really, whatever answer now we put up here, we're going to need this decimal point. Whatever number this is, it's going, 4 is going into, into 2 a fraction of the time. Um, but we're representing, we're trying to represent that process using a friendly whole number. But the meaning there is difficult. And I, and I hope I'm starting to help you make sense of that. So how many times does 4 go into 20? Well, 4 goes into 20 five times. So just like before, we put a 5 up here. Right? We're going to put that 1 up there from before. So now 4 times 5 is 20. 
And when we subtract this time, we're trying to figure out, is there still anything left over? Well, 20 minus 20 is 0. And whenever we reach this 0, there's nothing left over, and we're done. Nothing left over. We are done. Sweet. So that, that, one's, that one works out nicely. Let's try some more and see if that helps us get the hang of it. Let's try another one. Um, how about, even, even easier, 3 goes into 15. So when we look at long division, we want to break up this number here because we want to ask ourselves, does 3 go into, into 1? No, it does not. Okay. Does 3 go into 15? Oh, yes, it does. How many times? Well, 5 times. Oh, so 3 times 5 is 15. And there when we subtract, we realize that there's nothing left over. So again, we're done. Let's look at some more examples. What if I had um, 32 divided by 8? So the way long division works, again, look at 8. Does it go into 3? No. Okay. Does it go into 32? Oh, yes, it does. How many times? Well, 4 times. So 8 times 4 is 32. We subtract to see if there's anything left over, and there's nothing, and we're done. So 32 divided by 8 is 4. And we keep going with this. What if we had 46 divided by 3? Okay, well here, does 3 go into 4? Yes. And really we want to be aware that that's 4D, not just a 4, but that'll help us. So 3 times 1, right, is 3. So what's left over? And this is we're going to use this process to figure it out. So to figure out what's left over, we do 46 minus, well, let's think of this as 30. Line those digits up, because that is a 30. And if you ask why, well, when we did 3 times 1, this 1 up here is in the tens place, so it represents 1, 10. So 3 times 10 is 30. Now we subtract these two. 46 minus 30 is 16. And now we're getting somewhere. There's less left over. Okay, does 3 go into 16? Well, it doesn't go into 1, but it goes into 16. How many times? That's the question. Okay, well, 3 times 5 is 15. Oh, so 3 goes into 16 at least 5 times. 3 times 6 is 18. Oh, too many. 3 goes into 16 5 times evenly. 6 is too much. So 3 times 5 is 15. And again, uh, we're just calculating and recalculating what's left over. So now, 16 minus 15 is 1. So that means there's something left over. So now 46, um, right, we, we have this number here. Let's write this, 46.0. I haven't changed anything. I'm just adding in other digits as I need to think about them. Because here, 3 doesn't go into 1. 1 is smaller than 3. So we want to carry this digit down and rewrite this 1 as a 10. So now we can ask, how many times does 3 go into 10? But we should be aware that we put this decimal point. So whatever we say, it's really going to be a fraction of a number. So 3 goes into 10, well, how many times? Well, 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so it goes into it at least 3 times. 3 times 4 is 12. Oh, that's too large. So 3 times 3 is the maximum number of times 3 can go into 10. So we put a 3 here. So 3 times 3 is 9. And now 10 minus 9 is 1. And something fun is happening here. That 1 is popping up again. So we put in another 0. Drop it down. And again, we're asking how many times does 3 go into 10? Well, 3 times. 3 times, now it's a point oh three, right? 3 times 3 is another 9. And this chunk right here, if you look at that, it's going to repeat over and over again. We're never going to get rid of this 10. So here the answer is 15.3, and this 3 is going to repeat over and over again. And that's our answer. So you see how long division, um, through this process of finding out how many times this number goes into this number, multiplying that, 
and finding what's left over, we can always come to the answer. So we'll look at some more examples in the next video.